All right, good. Let's check the audio. Well, hello and good morning to um, everyone who's joining us today or who is creating art with us after this uh, live version of our family art workshop. I am so excited for you all to be joining us here today and welcome to Virtual Cascadia Art Museum. So my name is Lauren Carol Bolcher and I am the Community Engagement Manager at Cascadia Art Museum. And I am so excited to present our next virtual family art workshop, Collage Flower Pots for Mother's Day with Lynn Hansen. So before we begin, I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are hosting this program from the traditional lands of the Coast Salish, Stillaquamish, Snohomish, and Suquamish people who have stewarded this land for generations. Lynn Hansen is an artist and owner of Lynn Hansen Gallery in Pioneer Square, Seattle. Because of her Danish heritage, she has been doing research on Nordic culture and creating art inspired by her findings for several years. During, uh, sorry, during COVID, this year of COVID-19, Lynn has been spending peaceful times in Lindale Park near her home, walking amongst the forests of the trees and enjoying the bird melodies have helped in getting through this challenging time. Nature Heals is the name of Lynn's newest painting series, According to Nordic Culture, a publication of the National Nordic Museum in Seattle. Friluftsiv is a wonderful Norwegian amalgam of words for free, air, and life mirroring the experience she has had on these daily walks. This workshop that you're joining in today continues her Mother's Day workshop series at Cascadia and is intended to bring some of her free lutz fit live inspiration and a bit of nature into this year's project. So before I turn it over to Lynn, if you have any questions during the workshop, please feel free to use the chat feature. You're also welcome to have your cameras on for those of us, uh, those of you joining on Zoom today, it's a nice intimate group. So um, we welcome you to share your art and we love to hear about what you're creating. We will be monitoring the chat uh, just to check if you have any other questions, but we do ask that you remain muted unless you're specifically asking a question just so that everyone can hear. So thank you so much, Lynn, for leading this today, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, thank you so much, and thank you to Cascadia for hosting this. I think it's a really wonderful event. Um, I would really love to um, show you collage today. Collage has been something that I've been working on through my art career, but it's lately I've been doing more of it because I really like the way that you can just cut things and put them together and it gives you the chance to um, explore a little bit what you're doing before it's final. You can cut things and rearrange them and see how it goes together. I just hosted the Northwest Collage Society in my gallery the last two months and they had a wonderful show. And I saw collage and 3D and 2D and all different ways to do it. So um, I was just looking, I decided to look up Mother's Day and when it officially started. Mother's Day was created by Anna Jarvis in 1908. And it became official in, 20, uh, in 1914. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So this is just a way to create something wonderful for our moms. And uh, as Lauren says, I've been inspired by my walk in what I call the forest in Lindale Park. And hearing the birds sing during COVID, seeing the beautiful things growing, it's been um, very helpful to me. So. I hope that you will have fun creating this. So we're making flower pots and it's collage. And what I've done is I'm gonna show you first, there's a, this is another design, but you don't have to do my design, but I'll show you what was in the bag so that you know what, what it is. So first uh, there's patterns and you can create your own patterns or you can, use these in any way you want. And then this is a yogurt container. I've been recycling these yogurt containers and it comes from my favorite kind of Icelandic yogurt. And I recommend these containers because 
all you have to do is get it a little bit wet and it just pulls right off. And these containers are great for holding water for when I'm painting. I use my painting water. All these containers, they're scooping popcorn, all kinds of different things. But I, all of these yogurt containers, I have brushed with gesso. And gesso is a, a product that has been used by artists for many, many, many years. And it's the under, you paint it under whatever you're gonna paint in oil or acrylic. And it makes it gives it a tooth and it also makes it so that you can paint without it sinking into the surface. So I painted these with gesso and I just would advise you not scratch a lot on it because this is a non-porous surface. It's sticking really well, but it's a non-porous surface, so it would be better if it sunk in. And then I gave everybody a little pot of this is golden. Is the company I really like golden matte medium and it's I use it for gluing down the papers and it's also good that you can mix it with acrylics so you can use it for, and also you can get gloss medium golden gloss medium and that makes it shiny but I just got matte medium because I like the way it looks for collage you could also add them together half and half and it makes it kind of a not matte, not gloss. But then I um, I painted some papers, some really thin papers. And so these are what we're gonna cut. And there's these different colors. And these, it's kind of a deli wrapper type of material. And I really like the way that the paint goes on, it's kind of splotchy and I like that for the effect it gives when you're doing the collage. So that's what the kit includes. And I invite everybody to just get real creative with what they're doing. So I'm going to turn the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing down here. So you can cut out your pattern, whatever pattern you're choosing to use first. And I I like to trace these onto thicker paper, like an index card or something, and then it makes it easier to trace. So I would recommend using a black Sharpie because you can see it really well. So you have your, your shape and you can use the scraps for smaller leaves or if you're gonna do one of the leaf collages, um, you can just use any little scraps and make smaller little bits or lines. And I, I gave a little bit of brown in case you wanna do a, a stem. You could do a tree, you can do whatever you want, but I like the way that this, do a stem like that, but I like the way that the, the paintbrushy marks look on this, when you adhere it. So on this one, I actually, I after I was done, I felt like I wanted a different background, so I painted it a pale yellow. And so you can do something with the background if you want to, or you can just collage it all in. Um, so the matte medium, you can do it a couple different ways. You can paint the back. Also something cool about this paper, since it's transparent, is you can use one side or the other. So this side would be lighter and this side would have more intense color, but I'll do the more intense color for this one. So you can paint it on the back or you can just do it on the 3D container. But it's, 3D is a little bit trickier than 2D for flattening it out. And you'll see when you put it on that there will be little bumps. And you, 
When I'm doing a collage that's 2D, I usually use a credit card or something plastic like a credit card to smooth it out really well. But with this, I, I think you could still do that, but I, I use my fingers too and just kind of smooth it out. And usually when it dries, it gets a little bit flatter. And if it doesn't get completely flat, that's okay too. And so it makes it, so it sticks. And then the other thing that's cool is if you want to do a different leaf and then put it on top, the transparency will show through. It's a little bit, I love tissue paper collage, but it's really, it bleeds a lot. But this this is golden paint. It's a good good quality acrylic paint on these. So if you can see it, it shows through a little bit. The darker green shows through a little bit. And then I'll do another yellow leaf. You can, um, leaves are pretty simple, so. I just get so inspired on my walks. It's so, um, clears my head. If you've never been to Lindale Park, it's, it's uh, very close to Edmonds. And there's a really nice dog park at the bottom of the hill. And it's, it's completely forested. There are, are trails that are dirt trails. So you can do the, you could do the asphalt trails, or you can do the dirt trails. And you end up at a dog park at the bottom and it's very, very private. And just every season, it's so beautiful what you see. Just adding a little brown stem to the bottom. The other, this, this bigger one can be either a leaf or a tree, really. The other wonderful thing about collage is you can use so many different things. I'll show you in a little bit that I cut some, just some pretty patterns and fabrics out of magazines that if you need a certain color, that you can just cut something out of a magazine that has the right color that you're looking for or newspapers, even old, like I really like old papers that you can add to collages. I love old um, patterns for making clothes. Those are super transparent and you can use those on top of other things and but just the lines basically shine through. Okay, so this leaf I'll do red, I guess. And also in September, what are the dates? Um, September 18th and 19th, Edmonds has a studio tour that about 20 different artists open their studios and you can come by, it's on a Saturday and Sunday. You can come by these artist studios and usually there's more than one artist in the studio. And so you can see all this great art. It's a good chance to meet people. It's a really fun way to see 
a lot of times artists will be doing demonstrations on what they do. So you can come and see people working and you can see the studio and how people have their studios set up. And this year I'm on the studio tour and I have two other artists, Martha Hurst and Lynn Garka are showing with me and they're both really, really good artists. So I'm excited. We meet very interesting people. And it's in the end of September, so hopefully COVID will be all settled down more than it even is now. But I have to say it's really good having my gallery open again and being able to see people in person. And sometimes I leave a spot where I don't get the whole thing. Like this place here, I have kind of a bubble. And so that's something that's probably not good to do, but I'm in a hurry. So I put a layer underneath and now I'm just trying to catch the spots that I missed before. And a brushing on top is, is a good thing to do too, because it <laughs> gives it a coating both on the top and the bottom. And this um, matte medium will dry. It looks cloudy when you put it on, and then it dries and it's clear. Like I said, the thing I like about collage is you can just play with it and see if it's working or not, and then just keep adding. And then at the end, if you feel like it needs a different color background, you can go to that again. I'm getting it on my fingers. It won't hurt anything, but it gets really gunky. And so I wipe it once in a while with water. And this dries pretty quickly, actually. So I think I'll add a stem to the red leaf. There's a brown stem. Any of you who are artists and are looking for juried shows, my gallery does, it's called the annual, this year it's the eighth annual icon show. And icon is a theme, but it can really be lots of things. Anything glorified can be an icon. And so every year I get so excited to see what kind of work comes in, but it's juried this year by Don Laurent and she's an art appraiser and an artist herself. And she lives in the area. So I asked her if she would be the juror this year. And so she will choose the works that will get into the show. And hopefully this year we can do, I've been open in the gallery on Fridays and Saturdays from four, from uh, 11 to four. And I'm hoping, you know, maybe we could even have a live art walk by then in, in September when the show is, or we could maybe have a live reception. We'll have to wait and see. But we had the show last year and it was virtual and it was, it was good.
just a matter of continuing around. And um, on the one that I started, also when it, before, actually these ones, before they got dry, I did black marks on them. Or no, after, no, before I painted them, pasted them down, I did black marks on them with a Sharpie marker because they won't bleed. But with this one, I will have to wait until it gets dry to do black marks. But maybe I should have said this before, but it's easier if you do it when they're flat, but if you can do it afterwards too. So I'm going to let this guy dry and I'm going to start on the one with the birds. The birds and the heart. So also with this one, when it's flat, if you want to do, you can do, where's my Sharpie? I tend to be kind of a messy artist. So I'm going to draw the little eyes on the guys. This is dry. And then you could draw little wings if you want. So I'm going to put, since this one's dry, I'm going to put some little embellishments on it. Try to be a little bit uniform with these leaves. And just keep adding. Um, also, I looked up the word collage, and collage comes from the French word, and I don't pronounce French at all, but I'll try. Collier, C O L L E R, and it means to glue down. And the most famous artists known for starting collage are Brock and Picasso. But I'm sure that there have been lots of other people that have done. It's basically, if it's basically just to glue or to stick together is what collier means. I mean, people have been doing that forever in photo albums and lots of different ways. But Brock and Picasso were kind of the ones that got, and Matisse did too, but getting it started in fine art. So I like the way that the green, I don't know if you can see the brush strokes in there, but just the brush strokes make it a little bit more interesting as a leaf, I think. Then when I'm done, I can take a marker and make little, like I can match the little leaves together and make curly things and go around. And I'm gonna show just, I, I cut out some pretty patterns. This isn't gonna match what I'm doing now, but just 
I got some strips just at like this side is really pretty. It's kind of the indigo strip with white. And this side I think is really pretty. It's just kind of flowers. But if I wanted to make just some stripes, and I like a lot of times I like to tear collage. You can cut, but you can also tear makes interesting edges. So this apply it the same way. And that's something out of a magazine again. There's another pattern. fun way to recycle old magazines or old yogurt containers. A lot of times if I don't want to, like if I find something I really like in an old book or something that's past you can use it because it's past, you know, that doesn't have a copyright anymore. Um, I'll photocopy it and use it without ripping up the book. It's hard for me to rip up books. Anyway, you can just do some fun stripes. And then when these were done, I could paint stripes in between or I could paint over, kind of continue over the pieces to make some of it showing and some of it um, not showing. So I just want to show you some other kinds of materials that are good for collaging. So I was looking through, I like these, I like to get, like I was saying, old books. And this one, I think I got this in Portland. But I was just looking through there. I think these, I love these pictures of the old school books. But this one I thought would be really good for Mother's Day. So if I was using this instead of like this darling book, I would have a hard time cutting it up. But I would just photocopy that and use like I could cut out the mother and the little girl or something. And um, yeah, here's another one. Bill and Susan. A good Mother's Day picture. And then um, also, I really like to use, there's fun papers you can buy. This one has little skulls. I don't know if you can see the little skulls. You can tear it or you can um, cut it. There's, I found SH green stamps from the 50s. And here's an old, oh, this is Montgomery Ward's catalog of corsets. And from old books, this one unfortunately had already been ripped up, but just these beautiful borders that you can use. I really like these old, like invoice kind of things. There's all these old wallpaper. This the tag from furniture. 
that could be photocopied and, and put in a collage. There's bingo, old universal waffle grill, and the pictures inside. I love these 50s things. Just fun stuff. And then another, sometimes in antique stores, you can get postcards. And I think just the front of the postcards are beautiful, but then to see the the ones that have been used and written. I really like the writing. This one. And then stamps. I like to use used postage stamps. This one would be good for Mother's Day too. And these tiny little, I love the, the writing, it's just gorgeous. solving whole home problems. And this, yeah, the, the, the uh, patterns, like this is the McCall's pattern of a sleeve. And if you, if you put it into a painting, most of it disappears or into a collage, but you will get the lines, the black lines will be there. So if it said six, six sleeve, you would get that. Just interesting papers, funny advertisements. I don't know where I don't know where I got these old postcards, but I really like them. Um, and then the there's uh, I think these are called Joss papers. And I've gotten these, I think I got these in Chinatown in San Francisco. They have nice metallics on them. And I think this was a pattern that I probably put some old ink, some brown ink or something to make them look super old. More old advertisements. And this, I don't know what this is, but I really like it. Might be some computer thing from a long time ago. And then there's these beautiful Asian papers that you can get in a lot of art stores. And also the origami papers. This was a, in a pack of origami papers where you get a bunch of different ones. And I have this really pretty, like, a transparent paper, but it has leaves and things pressed into it. And you can get these in art stores. And I like the Asian lettering papers. And then I think this is Joss Paper 2 from uh, Chinatown or the International District. I'm not sure where I got that. Anyway, there's a lot of different choices we're doing collage and you can even, I got these at Pottery Barn a long time ago, but they're leaf skeletons. And they're transparent, they're really beautiful. I could have gotten them from dead leaves, but these ones were nicely pressed and everything. So that's a lot of this stuff that you can do with collage. Um, are there any questions? Also, when I'm doing, sometimes I like to add things. I got these. These are buttons or beads from an African store in Berkeley, I think. And I think they're, I don't know if they're made out of bone or wood, but you can, add, if you get a thicker medium, matte medium is probably too thin, but you can get a, a thicker medium too. So those are fun. And then I like to get, Sometimes I'll just put, um, these are Milagros from Mexico that are called Miracles. Milagros, I think, means miracles, but I really like them. You could put them in stuff. There's a store in downtown Seattle that sells these. You get so many for a dollar or something. Chicken.
So let's see, this is drying nicely. So once you get your collage done, this one I might be able to draw on because it's getting dry, dry enough. So you can use, I have, These kind of markers. I don't know if that would work. Yeah, it does. But you can just do some lines if you want, and then use the Sharpies always will work. Except it's a little bit wet, so it's not totally working. So you can fill those in and do the decorating any way you want. And if you decide that you want, this one's getting dry enough that I can do around it. So um, I have some acrylic paint and I'll just do a little bit of acrylic paint around it. This is a pale yellow, whoa. When I do my acrylic paints, I put a couple layers of um, paper towels underneath, and then I get this deli wrapper stuff and put it on top, and it'll keep the acrylic paint so that it'll you can use it for a long time. And I put I just use these trays or from IKEA, and I just put one tray on top of the other, and it'll last. The paint will last for days. So let's get a brush. I'm not going to get up too close to any of this. And just fill in around it if you want, if you have some paint. And then when you're done and it's really, really dry, you could even put a, a layer of matte medium over the top of everything and that will keep it, um, it'll make it more sturdy. It'll make it more firm. Everything will hold down really well. You can paint designs or details. You can draw designs and details. And just do something like that. Um, let's see, where's my birds? Acrylic paint dries really fast.
So that gives it just a little bit of a different look. I'll try some in between the stripes. And I do have a workshop in my gallery called um, Wabi Sabi and the Spirit of Collage. It's taught by Donna Watson. And Wabi Sabi is a, is a Japanese word for things that are old and kind of worn and torn and tattered, but because of the age, they're considered beautiful. Like a lot of old kimonos are considered to be wabi-sabi because maybe they've been patched over the years because they've been worn so much and they become really beautiful. But Donna teaches this technique called wabi-sabi collage. And we do a lot of painting on Asian papers that are transparent. And then you can use, like we did here, either one side or the other. One side's lighter and the other side's darker. But um, it, it, um, it's a really fun class. And in fact, I think this one, I used that technique that this is one of my 2D collages, but we painted one side of the paper like this indigo, like, and then the other side, when you turn it over, it's much lighter. And so these are all painted papers. And I think I used the Joss paper, the Asian paper for that, and then an Asian paper for that. It's just an example of some of the things you can do. And that just happened to be there. But anyway, so I just want to thank my husband, Robert Guchek, who drilled holes in everybody's yogurt containers so we can plant. So I will, let's see, I wasn't able to supply the dirt or the plant, but I will demonstrate planting. So you can do either inside plant or outside plant. I'll do, I will plant in this one because it's all dry. So I'm just going to put some tomatoes in the bottom for drainage. Potting soil, and as I say, these containers are super handy for lots of things, like getting potting soil. I got outdoor plants. I got these begonias. So I put the soil in. Have the rocks in. Set it in, put a little bit more soil. A little bit of water and then
So there we have it. I think that's it, Lauren. I want to thank everybody for coming. Well, thank you, everyone. And thank you so much, Lynn, for leading us in this art project and even showing us how to plant a plant. Um, it's so exciting to have that connection to nature and to our world in this way and that you can make art in your garden as well. And I hope you all enjoy making art if you want to continue doing this project or do it again you have many things you could decorate um and thank you all for joining us today this is just a reminder that actually tomorrow for mother's day we have free admission for all mothers at the museum so if you want to nice. celebrate all moms and um maybe just have a really nice family experience together if you feel safe you are welcome to come to Cascadia Museums and Cascadia is a wonderful place to make family memories and making art together is also such a nice family experience. So thank you all so much for joining us and thank you, Lynn. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Lauren. Bye-bye.